security has increased here at the Capitol. And in the past 24 hours, we have seen protests inside, some just feet below me, others getting arrested at the Capitol Rotunda, all in response to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's visit. His speech before Congress today coming at a crucial time in the Israel Hamas war as there's mounting pressure for a ceasefire deal and also a pivotal moment here for U.S. politics. Our policy. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu greeted by protesters in Washington no, no, no as he meets with U.S. leaders ahead of his speech to a joint meeting of Congress Wednesday while his country's war with Hamas rages on. Families of U.S. hostages held in Gaza met with Netanyahu in Washington, imploring the prime minister to end the war by signing a ceasefire and hostage release deal. I was in Gaza for 51 days, and I saw everything. I felt everything. Last night we met Prime Minister Netanyahu again. I have to say the urgency of the matter did not seem to resonate with him. Netanyahu also set to meet with President Biden. Their relationship strained with some in the Democratic Party expected to boycott or miss the speech, most notably the new presumed Democratic nominee, Vice President Kamala Harris. An aide said the vice president has a previously scheduled event at the same time. The gravity of the situation cannot be overstated, and yet Kamala Harris will abandon her seat. I am skipping this address because Netanyahu has undermined the peace process. I see him just wanting to continue the war for his own political future because he is facing criminal indictments. You know, I am a proud Jewish woman and I have had a long connection to the state of Israel. And frankly, that is why I am not going. He is a danger to the state of Israel, to peace in the region. So many people want to see the hostages come out and they are not going to because he doesn't care about them. Netanyahu has had a busy visit so far here in Washington, and that will continue after a speech into tomorrow where he is expected to meet with President Biden and then separately with Vice President Harris before heading to Florida to meet with former President Donald Trump. The speech to a joint meeting of Congress set for 2 p.m. Eastern today. On Capitol Hill, I'm Brian Abel reporting. We have an update. Previously, I told you there were four intersections that have been blockaded by the people for Palestine. Now it's five. <laughs> Pennsylvania and ninth, Independence and 14th. North Carolina and Pennsylvania Southeast, Independence and 4th, and Union Station have all been claimed by the people. All I'll say is stay tuned, more to come. We're all here for the same reason, right? We're all here for lives that are suffering and being lost. So specifically, my motivation is that these kids who are no longer with, with us would have at least a few last words in the fact of their appearance and that they would not be totally forgotten. Fundamentally, this is political theater. Netanyahu knows how to play the audience in, in Congress. He's here to make, to make reassurances to them that everything is under control. But he, one and the people around the world have, have seen very clearly that things are not under control. They have been unable to achieve their objectives. What they've done instead is indiscriminately targeted civilians to try and break the spirit of Palestinians. That's what everyone is out here in the streets to say, that fundamentally you should not be taking these people at their word. 
They're proven liars. Ultimately, what their objective is, is to ethnically cleanse Palestinians from their land and to continue the process of settlement expansion that has been seen, that has been declared illegal under international law for decades. It's really clear, um, and, and it comes out most clearly, I think, in the story of the arrest, where I was leading a prayer, and it's called the Shabbat, it's like a central Jewish prayer that is really the essence of saying that God is one, which means that all humanity is one, and that we need to treat each other as if we are all one. If that's the case, how can we not stand up when there's an attempted genocide? How can we not stand up when we see Palestinians being treated the way they are treated? Good afternoon to everyone. We are certainly happy to welcome our friend Benjamin Netanyahu, who is, of course, the Prime Minister of the State of Israel. This is a very important time. Our bipartisan congressional leadership recognized it as such and invited him here because our dear ally Israel is in an existential fight for its very existence, and that fight extends to every, every one of its borders. Today, the Israeli people are working to defeat Hamas following, of course, the horrific massacre on October 7th. They're having to ward off Hezbollah in the north. They're having to respond to Houthi attacks in Tel Aviv. And they fended off a historic watershed direct attack from Iran itself, a regime that is allied with Russia and China. The threats Israel faces are not only kinetic. Jerusalem is also combating lawfare and information wars and double standards from the UN and the media. Today and every day, Americans must stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel in its great struggle. In this struggle, nearly 300 days after, after October 7th, our hearts remain with the 120 men and women, boys and girls who are still in captivity in Gaza. Adon, Iltai, Saji, Hirsch, Gadi, Judy, Omer, Keith, and so many others are being held deep in tunnels. We have not forgotten them or their families who so desperately want them home, and we, of course, do as well. Israel and the United States are united in our mission to bring them home. I have full confidence that we will do just that. I have to say it's providential that the Prime Minister is here today after the 17th of Tammuz. It was nearly 2,000 years ago that the most powerful nation in the ancient world laid siege to Israel and destroyed Solomon's temple. But today, the most powerful nation in the modern world is standing with our Jewish friends and the Israeli government. I'm certainly eager, as we all are, to hear from the Prime Minister, and as we hope that this 17th of Tammuz marks the last time the Jewish people lament destruction 
so that they can live freely and securely in their ancestral homeland. I would uh, defer to the Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker Johnson, you have uh, shown great leadership along with the, the leaders of the Senate and the minority leader in the House. I appreciate the fact that you've invited me to address this uh, great assembly, the world's greatest democracy. The Congress of the United States uh, speaks for the American people, and the American people speak for the entire world. I very much value this opportunity to address this uh, August forum. You said uh, just now something that uh, uh, resonates throughout the ages. Almost 2,000 years ago, the Romans breached the walls of Jerusalem on this day, almost 2,000 years ago. Well, our enemies will not breach our walls today. And our wall is not made up only of our own soldiers, our brave heroes, but also the friendship and alliance with the great United States of America. That is very much expressed here today, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity. And the people of Israel thank you for giving us this opportunity mm -hmm. to you. express our common alliance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, what's your message to Democrats who are not attending your speech today? Sir, what's your reaction to Democrats boycotting speech? 